The women's soccer team is the NCAA Division II champions once again. A stellar defense combined with goals by Marty Corby and Katie Bounds knock off West Florida and earn Grand Valley its third national soccer title. Head coach Dave Biani will join us to celebrate this team's effort. The football team comes from behind with 21 third quarter points and a second half shutout against a high powered West Texas A&M offense. They advance to the NCAA semifinals. Head coach Matt Mitchell will join us to break down the action and preview next week's opponent. The best volleyball teams in the region gather in Allendale this weekend. The Lakers win two tough matches but suffer a heartbreaking loss in the finals. Assistant coach Jason Johnson will look at the team's phenomenal season. Welcome to another special Grand Valley State Sports Report. I'm your host Brent Ashcroft from WZZM TV 13. On your screen are links to football, soccer, volleyball and basketball. It was an action packed week and we will have all the highlights and interviews as the Grand Valley State Sports Report starts right now. The Lakers used 21 unanswered points in the third quarter for a 35-28 victory over West Texas A&M. It was their second straight come from behind playoff victory and they advanced to the semifinals against Northwest Missouri State. It was a snowy day with temperatures in the low 20s at Lubbers Stadium. It would be the fourth game in a row that the defense was facing a Harlan Hill candidate. This week it would be the Buffalo's Dustin Vaughn. He would lead his team down the field in six plays on the opening drive, finishing with a nice 33-yard pass to Anthony Johnson for the touchdown. The Lakers had no answers on the second West Texas drive. This time Vaughn would take the Buffaloes 73 yards in 13 plays. A short pass to Jackson would give the visitors a 14-0 lead. On the Lakers' second drive, Heath Parling threw a bubble screen to Brandon Green, who broke down the sidelines for a 36-yard run to the end zone. The senior receiver has made big plays for the Lakers all season long. The defense was able to stop West Texas' running game, but Vaughn would convert third down plays. His third TD pass put West Texas up 21-7 early in the second quarter. Eric Thompson got the Lakers in great field position with a 47-yard return. Then Kirk Spencer took a pitch pass from Parling and raced 46 yards for a touchdown to bring the score to 21-14. Again, Vaughn led West Texas down the field, converting a third and 13 and a third and 15. Buffalo scored when Vaughn put up a pass to Anthony Johnson in the corner, a play in which Michael Hatcher was injured. With the efficiency of this offense, no one would have thought this would be West Texas A&M's last score of the game. The first drive of the second half was key to give the Laker offense some swagger. Kirk Spencer had a nice run on another shuffle pass. Parling hit pots and Chris Robinson grinded out some yardage. The Lakers would pull within a touchdown after Parling hit a wide open Joe Worth for the score. Arguably the biggest defensive play of the game was an interception by Deontay Hurst. They had finally stopped the West Texas A&M offense and had good field position. On third and nine from the 12-yard line, the Lakers decided to hand the ball off to Kirk Spencer, who found the hole and then found the end zone. The crowd warmed up to a tie ball game with momentum in the Lakers' favor. The Lakers picked Vaughn again on their next drive. This time it was Devontae Jones at the Grand Valley 35-yard line. It looked like the West Texas A&M defense would stop the Lakers this time. But on fourth down, the Lakers faked a kick, and Alton Voss ran for 18 yards and a first down. Three plays later, Parling would connect with Potts on a 16-yard pass, and the Lakers had their first lead with 327 left in the third quarter. The defense again was phenomenal in the fourth quarter. Reggie Williams picked off a pass and they were able to stop three West Texas drives. When Heath Parling scrambled for 12 yards on a third and seven, the game was over. 
The Laker faithful celebrated as Grand Valley would head to the semifinals in the NCAA Division II playoffs. Joining us now is head coach Matt Mitchell to give us his perspective on a great comeback win. You really got this comeback thing mastered here in the postseason. Down 16 at Colorado, you come back to win. Down 14 to West Texas, you come back to win. Not the ideal way you want to do it. You want to get out ahead on these teams, but you'll take it. Yeah, I think our team's resilient. You know, we don't uh, panic at all. We've been in so many situations. I mean, look back at uh, Hillsdale, we were down at half, and Northwood. And so we fought through with some of these things. I think when you play these great teams, and they come in, there's always some adjustments that have to be made by players and coaches. And I think that's one thing that our team has done a great job of. Our assistant coaches and our players have, um, you know, adjusted to this piece, the, the pace of play, what people are doing. And that's what allowed us to uh, come back in the second half in most of these games. Yeah, West Texas seemed unstoppable in that first half. 310 yards of offense, 298 of it was through the air. 9 of 11 on third down conversions. That was their key, wasn't it? Yeah, we got into a lot of second longs and third longs. We couldn't find a way to get off the field at all. And uh, they have a extremely potent offense. I mean, that skill set they had out there between the quarterbacks and the wideouts was great. There were some times where I felt like we weren't too bad of shape, but they made some they made some plays. And, and you can live with that, but a lot of those third downs and second downs, we couldn't get much pressure. And so I think that was one of the biggest adjustments we kind of make at halftime. We were trying to rush three and drop eight and rush four. We got a little bit more aggressive, and I think that we had some people in his face. And some of those times, that led to some of those turnovers. Obviously, the third quarter was huge for us. We got three turnovers, took the lead, headed into the fourth, and we were able to kind of cling and hang on in the fourth quarter. Vaughn was such an unstoppable quarterback in this football game, and they're up 28-14 at half. You made an adjustment on him, obviously, at half. What did you do to kind of disrupt him in the second half because they didn't do much at all? Yeah, you know, we weren't getting hardly anything out of our four-down pass rush, so we kind of went a little bit more using some of our linebackers and some pressure schemes. And I think that um, the pressure got him off balance and, and allowed us to make some plays in the secondary, you know, th uh, with those three interceptions. And our kids stepped up, too. We didn't really make a whole lot of plays defensively the first half. We made some plays in the second half, whether it was tackles for lost sacks or obviously the three picks by our defensive backs. Those were contested balls that they made plays on, and that set up our offense for great field position. And got to give credit to our offense, they finished. You know, they finished those drives, and we got touchdowns, not field goals, and that was big in that game. Yeah, three interceptions on Vaughn okay. in the second half. Two of those, you turned into scores. Talk about the uh, uh, Deontay Hurst interception. That seemed to be absolutely the key moment of the, of the football game for you guys. Huge momentum swing. You know, our offense goes down the first possession of the half. We go down, we go for it on fourth down and get the touchdown. And then it was like, when is our defense going to get a stop? After giving up a first down, we kind of roll a coverage, and I think we confuse the quarterback a little bit. And Hurst makes a nice play sinking underneath the ball. And I could just really feel at that time that, that was kind of the play that we needed to, to just give us a little bit more energy and give our defense some confidence because obviously we were a little shell-shocked throughout the course of the first half. We weren't really doing a whole lot to stop them. So kind of had some confidence, and our team really fed off that play the rest of the third quarter. And then we got some huge stops in the fourth quarter defensively. Yeah, everybody talks about the three interceptions, but uh, you, know, you force West Texas to punt twice. You disrupt them on a fourth down pass inside Grand Valley's 10. That was a huge play as well. Big plays there down the stretch. We had opportunities offensively to close that game out. With a one-score lead, if we could have scored another one and took it to a two-score lead in the fourth quarter, we probably could have been a little bit more comfortable. We didn't do a good job on offense. We threw a pick. We turned the ball over. Had some short fields. Our defense had to take it in short fields. The fourth down stop, forcing them to punt. Even there towards the end when we forced a field goal attempt with under like three minutes left on a fourth and 13 was big for our team. And then, um, you know, probably the biggest play of the game on a third down, he scrambles, you know, to get the first down and their offense doesn't have to come out and take the field. And that's back-to-back -back weeks where our offense has gotten the first down, has sealed the victory and not forced us to punt and give the ball back to their three offense. Three straight games now where uh, Parling has had four touchdowns uh, thrown. Talk about that. He continues to do it for you. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a reason we're winning. We have our best player out there. He wasn't out there last year. At the beginning of the season, he was banged up. He's healthy. He's playing. You know, and he's a leader. And he's our competitive guy. And so I don't think there's any, uh, it's not a coincidence that we're having success in the postseason with our best player playing quarterback. All right. We'll be back to preview a familiar playoff opponent, the Northwest Missouri Bearcats. The Lakers will travel to Maryville, Missouri to take on the undefeated Northwest Missouri State Bearcats Saturday at 3.30. Matt, the challenges keep getting bigger this time of the year as you take on a traditional Division II powerhouse, right? Yep, number one team in the nation. Haven't lost a game. Hasn't really been competitive in the playoffs. They've uh, 
really uh, been able to route the two opponents. They've had that abide and then routed two opponents, and uh, obviously we're there at their field. Uh, the last two times we played Northwest Missouri State, 2009 the championship game, 2007 at their place in the semifinal, very similar. We had, we've not won, so this is a, a powerhouse program, very traditionally strong program, and they're having a great year this year. So it's going to be a tough challenge for our team. And uh, but I would say too, we've we've got a bunch of uh, guys in this team that are fighters and believe, and they'll give it a they'll give it a whirl. Why are they 13 and 0? I understand they have a dual quarterback system. They got a couple of running backs too who can put up video game like numbers. They're very multiple on offense. Uh, they create you a lot of problems from a matchup standpoint. They have a uh, more of a throwing quarterback that does a great job managing their team. A senior from uh, Odessa, Odessa, Texas, Permian High School. If you follow Friday Night Lights, that's what that was based on. So he's been, you know, part of that system both in high school and college and had a lot of success. They have a running quarterback who changes up the pace for your defense. And then they got a lot of skilled players uh, between running backs and wideouts. And then pro probably one of the top defenses in Division II. Very stingy, don't give up much. The maximum they've given up, they give up 24 in their opener to a good Saginaw team. Since that, it's been less than three touchdowns the rest of the way out. And so uh, they just don't give up a lot of plays. And uh, playing at their place, it's a very hostile environment. They have, they have a great, great tradition. They have great fans, similar to Grand Valley. And so they come out in force for these type of games. You've uh, had to come from behind to win each of these past two weeks. And you mentioned the stingy defense. This is probably not the team you want to go down 16-0 against. Can't do it. I mean, if we get down uh, two scores, it's going to be very difficult just based on the style of play and the defense they have. So the start of this game is going to be just critical. We've got to come out and uh, put together some drives and execute. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've, got to, we've got to keep it together in terms of turnovers and special teams and field position and battle. And, uh, you know, we, we've gotten off to not great starts here the last two playoff games. We can't afford to have that happen Saturday. How important is it just to get your program back to the semifinals? I'm sure right now you'd be <coughs> in recruiting trips and thinking about next year, but you're a little bit busy right now, and that's a good thing. It is a good thing. We're 12-2. and two. You know, we're the last GLIAC team that's been playing the last two weeks, and uh, I think it's uh, this this – this postseason run is again validated what Grand Valley football is all about from the process of how we do things. And I think it shows recruits that this program is still relevant. And uh, we're hoping that once we get done playing, we'll sign a good class because we have a lot of interest based on the season. All right, Matt, good luck this week in Missouri. All right, thank you. You bet. We'll be back to review the women's soccer team's national championship. NCAA National Champions, 24 wins, no losses, and 21 shutouts. You couldn't ask for more out of a soccer team that some thought might be in a transition season after graduating some of the top players in program history last year. With us now is three-time NCAA champion, head coach Dave Diani. Congratulations Thank on an you. incredible weekend in Georgia. We just mentioned it. You graduated so many great players last year. It's not like the cupboards were bare. They certainly were not bare. But you bring in a lot of new faces. Everything seemed to mesh just right, and it led to another title for you. Yeah, I mean, it's fair to say we were in a transition year, but transition didn't mean we, we couldn't be successful. Last year in the, at the banquet, I challenged our, you know, our senior class, our upcoming senior class, and the rest of the team to, to write their own, their own history and their own legacy. And, um, you know, and, and they did that. I, you know, again, we, our senior class leadership doesn't come. You know, it doesn't come easily for them, and they did a great job. Um, you know, Kayla Kimball, Sam Decker, Taylor Callen as tri-captains, but Autumn Jacobs and the rest of the senior class did a good job. And, you know, we had things that we needed to rely on. We had to rely on freshmen that, that hadn't, you know, hadn't scored goals. And, um, you know, Shelby Humphreys, a senior who hadn't played a big role up top. So it was a process, but it got us to this game against AIC, and, and I was really happy with how we played in this game. Yeah, talk about this. You were quoted as saying that this was one of the best game plan executed soccer matches you've seen in your entire time at Grand Valley. Yeah, I mean, I think it was. You know, we, we wanted to get deep into the bench. This is uh, our first goal, Marty, Marty Corby slotting a ball to Jenny Shaba, who's an All-American, and, and she does, uh, well, one All-American to another All-American, and, and she does what she's done all year is, is uh, she was able to, to slot the ball off a of deflection. We, we broke down in the first probably 15, 20 minutes uh, uh, defensively, and I think it was, you know, legs and, and the excitement of the first game. And, um, you know, this is, the, this is their goal coming uh, about two, three minutes into the second half. This is where it was disappointing. We, we talked about matching their intensity in the beginning of the second half. We didn't do that. And, um, you know, we were, we were tied 1-1, but I, I think our resolve and our character you know, showed right after that with just Jenny Shaba getting herself in and missing the chance. But we that goal seemed to wake us up. And, and again, here's that same combination: Marty Corby, Jenny Shaba, a very nice goal to go up two to one. And and uh, from here on in, the final 25 minutes, 
we rolled a lot of our bench out and to you know to get them tired and uh, you know one of the game plans was to not uh, to, to have them have to get tired and, and use our bench to do so because they weren't very deep. So I was really proud of how our kids did. You got to be happy to uh, seeing Marty Corby continue to have uh, success. Uh, you know, a lot of your freshmen. You know, obviously this is a brand. This is uncharted territory for for these young ladies. And boy, did they come through for you. Well, and again, here's you know Erica Bradfield pressing on the center back. They're down two one. Kenny Stafford does a give and go, and we get a PK. And Kayla Kimball Sr. stepped up uh, like she has a couple times this year already to give us a three one lead. Um, and then at this point, I think momentum had just it had swung. Um, you know, we get we get another opportunity here, um, off a, off a chance, uh, Marty Corby, and then um, you know there's uh, Kenny Stoffer finishes it off, another freshman from Caledonia, and that makes it 4-1. And and again, momentum had swung. Uh, they didn't sub hardly at all in the second half, and we rolled eight players out in the second half to to make it a full 90-minute game. And and uh, um, you know it was uh, it was really exciting. You know the big thing when you get into the final four, you got to get win that first game and get to the national championship game. And uh, obviously we're going to see highlights of that here right now. Uh, West Florida defending champions. Uh, you knew this team w was certainly going to be tough, and uh, they had the better chances in the first half of the soccer match, didn't they? Yeah, for sure they did. Completely different team. Uh, man marked at the back with a deep sweeper, and you know, you, you just see two uh, two great chances by 11 and 14, and. In 18, they're, they're kind of three-headed monster up top, and we didn't do a good job, to be honest, uh, coming out in the first 20, 25 minutes. And uh, that was one of their very good chances that I thought really should have been a goal. Uh, Kenny Stoffer comes back and counters and just goes wide on the post. And um, right here, this is their best chance. Our goalkeeper makes a poor decision to come off her line, and she's just trying to make a play. And 11 uh, actually heads the ball and misses the net, uh, but yet it's wide open. So. After that, we you know we felt like we dodged a bullet, and uh, here's Jenny Shaba again getting a nice ball across. Gabby Gibor and Michelle Folk can get on the end of it, but you know I said to them at halftime, we we were very poor at you know in the first half, and it's still zero zero. So you got to feel good about where you're at, and and this is uh this is the break we catch Marty Corby with it, just an okay shot, but it's very muddy. It slips through West Florida's goal you know uh, goalkeeper's hands. We go up one nothing with about 25 minutes to go, and um, that's really the spark we needed uh, to carry the rest of the game, and, and we did a great job. In the uh, 76th minute, we're going to see it here. Kendra Stauffer getting uh, behind the West Florida back line. Uh, two on one, Katie Bounds would uh, finish it off. A perfect through ball right there. Absolutely. That's Jenny Shaba being Jenny Shaba. She's better, you know, she's a great athlete. She's better than the back line. They're pushing numbers to tie. Kenny Stauffer, Katie Bounds, and, and uh, Jenny Shaba counter in a 3v2, and um, Kenny Bounds is, is, is sitting there for a rebound that's two yards out, and that was really the end of the game there. And, and uh, again, we were handling a lot of pressure for them, pushing for a goal, and, and uh, that's kind of how soccer is. We counter and transition, and, and, and we, we take the trophy back as national champs. Once uh, you had that two-goal lead, your defense played so incredible. Uh, West Florida just one shot in the final 38 minutes of the match, and that's exactly what you needed to see from your team. Yeah, and, and some of that was the depth. They were getting very tired. We wanted, we had to get the game late into the second half and be be close. And um, they, they don't sub you know many players, and I thought there were some of their better players weren't as fit. But Kayla Kimball, Katie Woolley, Taylor Callen, you and Aon Dahl, Taylor Ward did a great job. Abby Miller came up with some good saves. And, and again, we started the year being rock solid at the back um, with young being young up front, and we ended it that way as well. Uh, we have about 30 seconds left. Uh, you say goodbye to some great seniors. Kayla Kimball, Kelsey Fiscus, Shelby Humphreys, Taylor Callen, Sam Decker, Taylor Ward, Autumn Jacobs, and of course your uh, outstanding goalkeeper, Abby Miller. Talk about losing those players. Well, fantastic leaders on and off the field, uh, 3.0 GPA by all of them the last eight semesters. Uh, they're great ambassadors of our program. They're going to be very, very well missed, but uh, we're going to have to reload and recharge and, and get, get going this spring to, to be better. Try to do another one in 2014. Congratulations again, Dave, on an Thank incredible you. season in the National Championship. Appreciate it. You bet. We'll be back to review the volleyball team's great season right after this. The volleyball team suffers a heartbreaking loss in the regional finals, but can look back at a tremendous year in which they finish 31-4 and, and win the GLIAC title and conference tournament championship. Joining us now is assistant coach 
Jason Johnson. Uh, to say the loss to Ferris on Saturday night was heartbreaking is probably an understatement. Uh, this is the last time you guys lost was to Ferris back in October. Right. They found a way that night. They found a way again on Saturday. Yeah, it, I, I think you're right. I think heartbreaking is probably a good way to say it. Um, you know, it, we I think we've all gone through just emotional up, ups and downs through these last couple of days after uh, dropping that match to Ferris. Um, you know, hats off to them for sticking around. We came out, I, I thought, very well on Saturday. Got up two games to nothing and. Like I said, unfortunately, couldn't sustain it. So, Truman State was uh, who you opened up uh, in the regional quarterfinal against. Here's some of the highlights uh, of that match. Uh, obviously, you, you win it. Uh, you do lose the first set to them, but you come back to win the yep. next three. Talk about what you're seeing here. Yeah, you know, we really felt going into this match, uh, we probably had one of the toughest matches matchups of the first round in the regional. Uh, Truman did an incredible job late in the season, making a long run in their GLVC tournament. Uh, making it to the finals and then actually I think bringing themselves from the 10th seed up to the 8th seed in the region and making it in. So we knew we had played them earlier in the year. Uh, we knew it was going to be a tough, uh, tough matchup for us. Uh, thought our kids handled it well. I uh, thought we you know, played well against a, a very well coached, uh, well skilled team. They win the first set as we mentioned 25-19. Second set you found your way, you led 15-11, eventually 20-16, you took it 25-17. Yep. Yeah, and then that was really the easiest set of the match. Um, the other two were two-point swings, I think 27-25 and 26-24, uh, uh, but very well played by both teams, we felt. And here is the semifinal against Ashland on, on Friday night. Again, you surrender the first set to them, not what you wanted, but then the team uh, responded by winning the next three. Yeah, you know, it's, it's been the running joke of our, our program all year. We just have a very difficult time starting quick. Uh, we come out, we... We'll play with a team. We'll, we'll kind of, if you will, feel it out, figure out where we're at. But then, yeah, have a, you know, always seem to be dropping those first sets and then come back. But Ashland's a very good, very young, talented team. Uh, we, it's the third time we played them. Had a great battle with them uh, in the GLIAC final match uh, two weeks prior. And, you know, again, felt like it was a very well played match by both teams. Both teams are pretty comparable as far as talent and in what we like to do, uh, really outside, right side dominant on, uh, uh, with Ashland and with Grand Valley. Thrilling fourth set in this match. Uh, they led 12-9, several ties, 18-20, 21-22. Uh, they actually had a 24-22 lead at yep. one point, and then uh, Kaylee Lound uh, was involved in four straight points for you. Yeah, Kaylee Lound has really grown into quite a volleyball player this year, uh, being a sophomore. Uh, first time stepping on the court for Grand Valley, and she has blossomed as a player as the season's grown. Here's the championship against Ferris. Uh, go ahead and talk about what you see here. Obviously, you came out like gangbusters, yep. uh, winning that first set in such a dominating fashion, 25-13, but uh, they made some adjustments and, yep. and figured some things out against you. Well, and I think the first set has a lot to do with you know nerves, uh, execution for both teams. You know, being at home, feeling confident with where we're at, uh, beating Ferris just a couple weeks ago uh, during the regular season. Our, our kids played very well in that first set. You know, I felt Ferris was a little tight, made a couple of mistakes early to, to help us, you know, uh, open up that lead. But then it, it, second set was probably a little more uh, what you would expect from a Grand Valley Ferris match. You know, 25-22, played very well. Everything was tight throughout that second set. Uh, we were able to finish off that second set and take a a 2-0 lead, and then had a little bit of an emotional letdown in three. Uh, Ferris, again, they, they weren't ready to go home, so they you know, picked up their play. Our kids probably had a little bit of a letdown, um, trying to close out a big match and get to an Elite Eight uh, in the, for the first time since 2010 um, in, in, in a rough game. So then we go to set four. Um, again, another great back and forth, as you saw on the, on the monitor. 28-26, uh, we end up losing there. Um, had an opportunity early to try to close that out, just couldn't, uh, couldn't come up with the, the kill we needed. Uh, got into the fifth set. You know, I, I give our kids a ton of credit here. We, we got down early in the fifth. We were down 6-4, came back, uh, ended up taking the lead at 11-7. Uh, really, I think, you know, from the coaching staff to the players, I think we really felt we were on our way at that point. Uh, it was just a matter of putting points on the board and finishing it out to 15 in that fifth set. And, you know, hats off to Ferris. They were able to stay with it, uh, play a little cleaner down the stretch, not make as many mistakes, and, and put the game away. So, What did you tell your team afterwards? 
You know, I, I think the big thing we talked with them about in the locker room afterwards was just, you know, it's okay to, you know, to be sad, to feel frustrated with, with the result. You know, I think we had an incredible year. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to feel uh, fulfilled when you are the number one seed in the region, when you've won the conference tournament, when you've won the regular season, and, and your expectation is, is to get to that Elite Eight, and you were so close. Um, but not to lose track of what an incredible season we had. And, and as a team, this team just achieved at a very high level all year long. And it's hard to get past a loss your last match of the year on your home court going to a quarterfinal. But at the end of the day, it was a great year, and we can't lose track of that. So. And off to the recruiting trail for you. Absolutely. So good luck in the offseason, obviously, Appreciate getting some it. more players into the, into the program, and it was a great season. Thank you. You betcha. We'll close the show right after this. The NCAA semifinal football game against Northwest Missouri can be seen on ESPN3 and GVSULakers.com Saturday at 3.30 Eastern Time. Go to GVSULakers.com for more information on all Lakers sports. Remember to like us on Facebook at the Grand Valley State Sports Reports. We are streaming on the web at YouTube.com slash WGVU35 and at WGVU.org. This week you can get bonus coverage on the web of the exciting GLIAC openers for the basketball teams. Next week we will break down the big game against Northwest Missouri State. For the crew, I'm Brent Ashcroft. Have a good week, everyone.